Okay, so um, I don't really know what your stand is on the healthcare system. Um, I heard that you're pretty against the, the public option, so I was just wondering. I mean, I think everybody can pretty much agree that there are there is a, a problem in today's healthcare system. So, what are what's your what's your idea? How are you going to fix it? How do you want to fix it? Yes, am I am I, am I coming through? Um, with healthcare, I think when you look at healthcare, you have to look at and you have to start, I guess, with a few assumptions. The number one assumption, I would say, is that most people are covered. Most people have insurance. Close to 90% of people in our country have insurance. The number two assumption, I would say, is that we have 100% access to emergency care. No one in our country is turned away with emergencies. You break your arm falling out of here, they will treat you in the emergency room regardless of your ability to pay. So we have great quality health care in our country, and we have 100% access for emergencies. Now they tell you 46 million people don't have insurance. And let's accept that, 46 million people don't have insurance. This is somewhere between 10 to 15% of the public. The other side of that coin is though, 85 to 90% of people do. So we're gonna look at a problem that is the minority, not the majority of the problem. But let's look at the 46 million people who don't have insurance. Of those 46 million, a third of the 46 million are eligible for Medicaid, the government program for the poor, and they haven't bothered to sign up. Why haven't they bothered to sign up? It's a pain. You gotta go down to the office and sit for an hour and fill out forms, and they know they can just go to the emergency room anytime and get free care anytime they want. So a third of the problem of access, we already have a government program for, we don't need a new program. A third of the 46 million who don't have insurance make more than $50,000 a year. And you say, well, that doesn't sound that poor. Why don't they get insurance? They're not getting insurance because it's expensive. And they've made the decision not to have insurance because of the expense. Many of them still do pay when they go to the doctor. They pay for their, their things as they go along. But their problem is expense. So you have expense as a problem and access. A third of the people who have an access problem are eligible for Medicaid. A third make more than 50000 20% are in this country illegally. They've come to this country illegally and they're part of driving the debate, which I think is wrong as well. When I talk to people about health care, I think the problem is not the access problem. I think we're doing pretty well, actually, with access to health care. I think the problem is expense. What I hear every day is I'm spending $1,000 a month for my insurance and I'm unhappy about it. So I would say the problem is expense. We need to figure out how we get uh, reforms that would bring down expense. And people say, oh, well, that means capitalism failed in healthcare. I would say no. What has happened in healthcare is we don't have enough capitalism. I'm in private practice, I'm a doctor, and I make a profit. But you know what? There's no competition. Everybody pays the same price. Why? Because over half of what I do is paid for by the government, and someone in Frankfurt or Washington sets the price. So there is no price competition. When you go to Walmart, you buy a cell phone for $14, it's because competition works. We don't have competition in healthcare. So we need more competition in healthcare. Even if you have private insurance, if you have Blue Cross or Humana or United, and you come to me, I charge the same as every other doctor in Kentucky because we've made sort of an agreement with the insurance companies. So the problem with healthcare is that the consumer or the patient, when they go in, you're not paying. People say, oh, I don't want to pay, I want a $10 copay, I don't want to pay the whole price. But the opposite is, let's say you had higher deductibles and you went in and instead of paying a $10 copay, you had to pay $150. You might say, well, I would hate that. But if you paid the full price when you went in and there were no price controls, then you would get doctors who charged $150, some who charged $140, some who charged $110, and competition works. There are two things I do in my practice that people pay cash for. Contact lenses, and many of you wear contacts and you know they're not very expensive anymore. Why are contact lenses cheap and everything else in healthcare is rising at 10 or 15% a year? Because you pay cash for contact lenses, competition works, you can get them through 1-800, you can get them through a million optometrists at the malls, and you can get them through ophthalmologists like myself. There are hundreds of different sources, but it's not just the number of sources, it's that you pay cash. Because if you magically double the number of eye surgeons tomorrow, the price of cataract surgery would be the same. That means it's broken. You don't have capitalism. Because when you double the supply of something, the price should come down. But healthcare is broken because you don't have price competition. You do in contact lenses. You can get a contact lens in my office for about $4. I'm not much different than Walmart. 
Not because I want to necessarily, but I have to because competition forces me to. If you want to get LASIK surgery from me, it's much more expensive, but my price has still gone down gradually over 15 years because people pay cash for LASIK surgery and have to compete. So competition works. So when we say which direction we want to go in healthcare, a public option, I say no. That's more government. That's going towards the Canadian or the European or the English style. I say no, let's go towards more competition. It works everywhere else. Why not bring competition into medicine as opposed to having the government do it? The problem with the government doing is what I, what I talked about before, it being free. Once you make something free, people overutilize it, and then they're going to be saying, oh, well, we're out of money. How do they do that? They ration care. In Canada, they have the public option. Everything's the public option in Canada. At any one point in time, a million people are waiting in line for surgery. People come across the border all the time to get their surgery because it's taking too long in Canada. There's a little town in Canada where there's a lottery to see the family doctor. One family doctor, and if you win the lottery, you might see him in six months. If you lose the lottery, it's three years. Because you could be stacked up because that's the way government runs health care. They can't be efficient because they don't have profit, they don't have private ownership, and people don't pay for it. So if it's free, everybody uses it, and you get too many people. I mean, it's a problem. Health care is free. If you have Medicaid, you go to the emergency room, so everybody goes in there with six kids for colds. When they should be going to the, the doctor's office, they go to the emergency room. And it messes our whole system up. But why do they do it? Because it's free. Free doesn't work. You have to pay for things, because then competition will work to drive prices down.